Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I have another project with you, for you today with the Heartfelt Bundle from Stampin' Up. Um, this is um, going to be filmed live. So those of you who are with me live this morning, yay, hello. And uh, for those of you who are not um, part of the live broadcast, um, if you wanna fast forward through this section, I like to wait just a minute before I really get into it because um, uh, everyone needs a chance to get on just in case they wanna ask questions and stuff like that. So today I am going to share a little slider box. And this one, yesterday I shared an M&M's um, slider and that was kind of fun and whimsical. And this one is kind of more of a, not really serious, but it's a little bit more um, uh, grown up and um, something that you could maybe give to your friends. And so I thought I'd share a different kind of version of what you could do with the same supplies. And I've added a few supplies on here, so I hope you um, I hope you like what I've done with this box today. Okay, I see we've got a few more people on here. So I'm gonna start, I'll show you my little box. This is my little box right here. And I'm not gonna slide it open because um, all the candy will fall out if I do that, um, but I'll do that over on um, my other camera when I do. But this is the little box. It's it's cute. Um, it's about three inches by three inches by um, an inch approximately. And so it's just, it's kind of cute. I don't think it's very hard to make it all, but I'll show you how to do it from start to finish. It uses mainly supplies from our mini catalog. So we've got the real, here on the side real red satin ribbon we've got the oh let me remember the name the from my heart designer series paper um, and then we've got some of these little um, what do you call them before I forget where are they on my supply list did I not put them on my supply list oh yes they, there they are they're from my heart faceted gems and if you subscribe to my email list, you will get a project sheet sent to you in the mail on Saturday. If you're not already part of my uh, email list, then uh, just go ahead and look for the link below where you can subscribe really easily and get on that list. Um, for the last few months, I've been doing project sheets for the tutorials that I share with you on video but it's nice to have a project sheet so that you can follow along step by step. Once you've watched the video, you might not necessarily wanna come back to the video, and it's nice to have the dimensions, it's nice to have a photo, and it's nice to have it all on one page, um, and then you can even keep it for future reference if you want to recreate the tutorial. So I um, do that for my email list subscribers, so I hope you will subscribe to that. All right, well, I'm gonna jump right in and um, start showing you how this box works and how to make it. So I'm gonna switch cameras. Let's see right here. Okay, so let me pull this out of the way. And for those who weren't with, you, with me yesterday, I just wanna talk about the Heartfelt Bundle. It consists of the Heartfelt Stamp Set and the Heart Punch Pack. So the Heart Punch Pack has two punches in it it has the smooth sided heart and then it has a scallop heart and they work really well together and then the heartfelt stamp set and it um it's not really true to size on the cover here but um this heart fits in the scallop heart to punch perfectly and the words are just wonderful i love how i could use these words and make a whimsical valentine and today i can use another greeting out of the set to create a more maybe not a serious valentine but like a little bit more of a grown-up valentine so this is a versatile bundle and um, if you're thinking about doing getting a celebration reward for it this bundle is 45.75 if you spend just $5 
around five more dollars um, maybe you get um, some of the paper or some of the ribbon and you bump your order up to fifty dollars then you can get a celebration reward out of our rewards catalog and we've got uh, stamp sets in there and paper and some embellishments so there's a lot of different things that you can get um, rewarded with that you could choose all right so here's the little box and I made um, a different one last night. I just wanted to test out my measurements, make sure they were still correct. Um, so basically this little box just slides in and out and inside here it will hold about 16 Hershey's Kisses. I'm sure you could squeeze in more but 16 fit in nice and comfortably and make a nice little display. You could put a different type of candy in here as well. So it just depends on you know what you like. I do like the Valentine's Hershey's Kisses because the colors match really well with the paper that I'm using on the front because we've got like the flirty flamingo real red and white so it looks really nice um, through this little window right here. Um, and then I did it with a different um, paper on the front. So there's several papers in that, um, what was it called? From My Heart Designer Series paper that fit very well on the front if you're gonna do this exact same design. You probably could use whatever paper you wanted, but depending on how busy the paper is, you might wanna change out some of the elements on the front, like maybe change out the flirty flamingo heart to a red one or maybe change your box base to flirty flamingo instead of real red you'll have to play with it a little bit but by the end of the tutorial you'll see three different samples with three different um, papers with this okay so let's start off with the cover and um, for that, you're gonna need a piece of real red cardstock. And this piece measures nine inches by three and a quarter inches. I'm going to take my scoring board and I'm going to put the nine inch side up at the top and I'm going to score at the three and a quarter inch mark, the four and a quarter inch mark, the seven and a half inch mark, and the eight and a half inch mark. Very easy, right? I'm gonna grab this away. And then, just like we did yesterday, the skinny segment, the skinny scored sc segment, I can't say that fast, skinny scored segment, say that fast three times and see if you can get that right. That one will be away from you and you'll have this big scored section down here at, a, at the bottom that measures three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And you're going to take a piece of designer series paper and again I've chosen one that's got a lot of red in it and not a lot of white for for this particular pattern when you add too much white to the pattern of the paper it's it's okay but you might need to um, change around the design a little bit um, this one also has these uh, hearts on the back that you can punch out um, so this one would not really be a good pattern from the front but the back is perfect so let's just take some Tombow I got my Tombow working here come on I might need to unstick this one this one for some reason and it's really my fault I left it open overnight and it hasn't been the same since I left it overnight I'm just using like a paper clip that I have um, opened up to clear the clog wherever it is yeah I think I've got like a little clogged piece in there that keeps coming forward and um, hitting on the end it's my fault I shouldn't have done it should have been cleaned up my desk okay so I'm gonna want the hearts facing down if your pattern has a top and a bottom you'll want the pattern facing towards you and you're just going to center it right on that segment that is three and a quarter by three and a quarter and i hope i mentioned that this piece of designer series paper is three inches by three inches and this is a good measurement for this 12 by 12 paper because it means if you wanted to um, make a lot of these that you're really maximizing out your your paper you can get um, what 16 
16 um, 3 by 3 inch squares out of a piece of 12 by 12 so it really maximizes the paper the other thing I love with this is it's really easy to punch the window okay because um, you're going to use the smooth sided heart so the one without the scallops and you're going to put this in as far in as it will reach and then you're just going to eyeball it and see to make sure there's enough not enough the same amount of cardstock on either side so basically you're just pushing it in all the way and making sure it's centered and now I'm just being nitpicky and then just punch through okay and then you'll have this heart that you can use for another project I've been <laughs> I've been collecting hearts in here, um, little punched hearts that I've punched windows out of. I need to do something with them. Um, I just have been sticking them in this um, mug on the side. So I'll, I'll have to figure out a heart project to do with all my punched out hearts. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little frame that goes around this heart. That kind of gives it more of a focus. So we're going to take the smooth sided heart and this is flirty flamingo cardstock. Just going to punch here. And hello to everyone who's joined me this morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so um, you can throw away the heart. Don't throw it away. Reuse it, repurpose it. I'm putting it in my heart mug. And um, then I'm going to take my scallop heart, punch, hover it around the hole, and then I just want to make sure it looks centered. Okay, I hope that's centered. Pretty good job. And it creates that itty bitty little frame. So then I'm going to take some Tombow. Let's see if my other Tombow is a little little less finicky this one's almost out but it it's been doing a good job of doing a little fine line so I just want a little tiny tiny bit of Tombow on this frame and then I'm going to adhere it right around this heart see how pretty that is it just frames up the heart a little bit. Okay. Okay. So next, I need to read my instruction sheet. That's why, because otherwise I veer off course. Okay, so we have, we've done, we've done the frame. Oh, I need to tell you about an optional thing that you can do for this. And I did not do it for mine because we have this little banner piece that comes across. And normally what I would do is I would put a piece of window sheet on the back side of this to keep the candy from coming out. But to save a step, because my candy is pretty big, it's not going to come out very easily. So because the banner's holding it in place, I left the window sheet out. But if for some reason you had smaller candy chosen, then what I would do at this point is flip this over and get yourself a piece of window sheet, cut it to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I would just put um, some tear and tape all around here and then I would stick that down and that would close up that hole. You can still see through, but in my case, you don't need the window sheet. So that's optional, it's something I did not do for mine. Okay, so then we just need to fold this piece along the score lines and you can use your bone folder to help get those creases down really nicely. So let me fold it first and then you can come back in and just crease it a little better. with the bone folder and then what we're going to do is put Tombow right here on this end piece okay and then I'm going to fold over this piece and put it down right on top of this end piece and then smooth it down and adhere it 
So now I've created a sleeve for um, my little heart box right here. So next, did I skip over a piece? Nope. I'm doing well. I haven't, uh, I haven't skipped ahead, which is something I do sometimes. I want to create a little banner piece that goes across the front. So I've cut a piece to, this is thick whisper white cardstock. It's four and a quarter by half an inch. And I'm going to take my triple banner punch. It looks like this. And I am going to stick this in. I'm keeping it um, the back side up. I'm going to stick it in as far as it will go. Make sure it looks centered and then punch it. This punch is really designed for one inch, one and a half inch and two inch. But if you have a smaller piece, you can use the back side of the punch. Just make sure it looks like it's centered when you do it. Then I'll stick the other end in. I'm just holding it with my finger on the um, the front side and then I'm just viewing it through the window on the back make sure it's centered and then punch it so now we have a little banner and I'm going to use one of the greetings from the set and I love this greeting it says being friends is better than eating candy but let's do that too right we don't have to forgo candy just because we're friends. So um, just ink this up right here. I better stand up so I can get a bird's eye view without sticking my head in the camera like I usually do. All right. Okay, not too bad. Slightly bit crooked, but hardly noticeable. And then um, take some mini dimensionals and just add one right on the back, actually two, one on either end, okay? And then you can peel off the little backings. And then you can add this right across the center like that. So that kind of plugs up the hole and keeps the candy from coming up. And in a moment we'll add the other embellishments to it, but for now let's get the other part of the box ready. So for that you're going to need a piece of thick whisper white cardstock and this piece measures five and one eighths by five and one eighths. So bring in your scoring board again. This time I'll take off all of my little markers and I'll just put that at the one inch mark and we'll keep it easy so five and one eighths by five and one eighths is the piece it's a square and then you're just gonna score it at the one inch mark on all four sides keep it really oops keep it really simple only have to remember that one score mark okay and then we'll take some paper snips and you'll just cut up along the score line till you hit the first score intersection. I'm gonna do that on the same side on both um, the score lines. Then you're gonna turn it 180. The score lines that you cut were over here on the opposite side and now you're gonna cut two more. If you haven't done this before, you're just making a box and these are called tabs, okay? Because we're going to fold these in and glue them. Now you can make it a little easier for yourself for the box to come together um, and if anything is off just a little bit, it helps that the tabs don't kind of stick beyond the sides. So what you can do is just give these little tabs a little angle cut, okay? So that way it will help the box look uniform up at the top. So just give them each a little angle cut. We can get rid of those and then we'll fold this along the score lines and we can take our little bone folder and make sure everything gets folded. Um, oh, Connie 
ask a good question about the window sheet. So she said, could I put the window sheet in between the designer series paper and the cardstock? Yeah, absolutely you could. Yeah, um, the sleeve though will, um, you won't be able to see under the, the sleeve. So like um, it's, it's not like you're gonna notice the window sheet very much if you're worried about it um, being visible. And um, so you could, but you could definitely, um, yeah, you could definitely do that. Um, you would just, you know what? You would have to do some uh, um, something a little differently though. You would have to um, um, not adhere the designer series paper permanently though. So when you've, um, on step two, I put the designer series paper, I glue it directly to the cardstock. So you do need to punch the hole through the designer series paper. So when you do that, um, if you already have it permanently adhered, then you can't stick the window sheet in between. So you would have to temporarily adhere it, then peel it off, put the window sheet under, and then peel it back on. So I think I still stand by, I like the window sheet um, on the back of here because it, it makes it like there's, it makes it that you have to do an extra step. And also it's gonna make it so this layer here sticks up a little bit higher. So that might be something you want or it might be not something you want. So you have to decide whether or not you want to create that extra step. So I would still put it the window sheet behind, but there's no reason why you can't. You just need to like change my directions around just a little bit so you don't adhere that paper down. All right, back to a good question though, because there's often a bunch of different ways to do things. And when someone asks me a question like that, I always have to think, wow, is, is that way better? Or is the way that I thought of better? Maybe not better is not really the, the right word, but um, whether it will work a different way and how, how do you want the finished product to look? Okay, so I've got this um, all folded. And so now let's see if this Tombow will work. I kind of like to do things quickly. So rather than glue, put glue on one at a time, I'm gonna put Tombow on the four corner tabs all at the same time. And this is not a bad thing. The only reason why it would be a bad thing is if you end up sticking your fingers in the glue. So carefully move that one over. And I like to hold it for a few seconds between my fingers, just so it doesn't pop open. Come to the next tab, fold it up, and make sure when you're doing your boxes that you bring the edge right to the score line because that way it looks nice and neat. It's those tiny details that make your project look like people will wonder, did you buy that or did you make it? You will always want that kind of that thought, wow, she made me something, but did she really make it? It looks so well made, right? You want it to be well made. So um, just pay attention a little bit to those details. So I'm just holding it for a few seconds, coming around, doing each one. And the last one right here. Hold it for a few seconds. Okay, so now our little bottom is done. And um, we can add some candy. So I got these Valentine's Kisses at the grocery store. I'm sure they have them everywhere if they have them at my grocery store. And about 16 fit in here. And I just love the look of, um, do I have 16? Yep, 16-ish. Um, I just love the look of them um, because they work really well with these. The pink is a little slightly different, but it looks nice. The silver, the pink, the red, voila, perfect. Then you're gonna take a little bow, and I tied this earlier because I hate tying bows on camera. Um, this is a made from the real red double stitch satin ribbon that's in the mini catalog. And you can use mini glue dots. I found with this, if you use just a little bit of Terran tape, it's a little bit longer and you can stick it 
kind of right above your heart and tear it off and it has a little bit more for your um, your bow to stick into and it helps um, like control those unruly ends of the the ribbon I think I may have stuck this on with the back side can I pull this off yeah this knot looks better on this side yeah there we go all right so that looks you know it helps pin down these ends a little bit and keep them from like sticking up funny if you use a little bit more adhesive and then the last thing I did was these little fauceted gems now they look really good they probably look the best on this one because you can see them the best but okay there's gonna stick to me so on this one I would probably cover um, some hearts with them so let me see I'll grab a white one I kind of like the pattern that I did so and then this little guy let me see come on which ones do I like uh, some of them are show itty bitty all right come here you okay so you're just going to kind of create a pattern that you like for this one i'm actually sticking them right down on the hearts they're going to be kind of subtle because um the hearts will kind of draw your eye in but it will be kind of like that little bling 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 um so just take a little tiny bit of tombow maybe i'll use my tombow that's coming out in a little tiny stream and Just put a little tiny dot where you want it to go and then just give it a little pat down Ooh, so pretty okay and this is just a little bit of bling if you don't want to use loose gems like this um, the rhinestone jewels or the pearls would look really nice too so um, there's different options, but it's nice to have a little bling because, you know, Valentine's Day is all about chocolate and, um, you know, just little blingy thingies. So, and I know, I know my friends would appreciate a little bling as well. So there you go. What do you think? Do you like this little box? I'm sure other candy would work well. Just keep in mind, this is about an inch high. So it, it works well with candy that's, you know, no more than an inch in height, but it can hold quite a bit of candy um, because this box is just, the bottom of the box is just a little bit over three inches by three inches. So it, it has enough space to hold candy without breaking the bank you know you don't have to put a ton of candy in here but it's a little bit more than just like a little sleeve like that let me go and see if there's any questions let me put my face back on here hi all right let me let me go um and see um okay hello hello to everyone who joined me this morning um Oh, Joe, you're here this morning. I'm glad you caught me live. Yay. Um, let's see. Um, aw, Karen says she loves my projects. Thank you. Um, Cindy says, I buy up candy after the holiday at half price for my projects. It doesn't go bad and saves um, me money. And it's, um, there, it's there when she needs a project. And as you know me, I usually use a lot of Hershey's um, Kisses. I use the silver ones quite a bit. So I buy my bags and usually this big bag, but I saw the Valentine Kisses and I'm like, I've got to get some of those. I just, I don't know, I was inspired. I just had to grab a bag. Um, and I'm glad I did because I think it looks really nice with this project. But some people just have the silver kisses in their country. So silver kisses will look just pretty as well um all right i think i answered everyone's questions but one thing i did want to mention i mentioned that you could get um a, a free product when you spend 50 dollars, but there is an even better deal out there and that is the starter kit 
And the starter kit is $99. So if you have a lot of stuff you want to get, say you want to get the bundle, you want to get the paper, and maybe you don't have a scoring board yet or, or you don't have a cutter, um, you could do this project just with the stamp and trimmer. You don't have to um, use the scoring board. I didn't use the trimmer um, this morning, but the trimmer also has a scoring blade on it. So you have a bunch of things. If you, uh, for $99, you get $125 worth of product in this starter kit. You choose what you want in that starter kit. Right now we have a special uh, until March 31st where you also get a mini cutter and you get a six by six pack of designer series paper. It's a sampler of papers from the mini catalog. It doesn't have every pattern, but it has like a smattering of patterns. So you can get like an idea of the different papers in the catalog. So it's kind of a fun pack. And then as a bonus, you get to choose a stamp set and any price stamp set to add. So that's uh, $125 worth of product, a mini cutter, a six by six paper pack, a bonus stamp set that's outside of the $125. Um, and you get that all for $99. The only other thing you pay is tax, so 99 plus tax, and it's free shipping. So you get a lot of stuff for your $99. Um, and the bundle, this bundle that I shared with you today with the stamp set and the two punches, that's $45.75. So um, it's almost all the way to $50, but if you had a few more things that you wanted to buy, $99 starter kit is an excellent deal. And I have a link to that um, down below. And if you have any questions about that, just shoot me an email or put it in the comments and I'd be happy to answer that. All right, guys, I hope you have loved my projects with the Heartfelt Bundle. Um, and if you purchase from me, you get you can choose one of my other um, tutorials that uses the heartfelt bundle this is a cute little clam shell heart box that i created exclusively for my customers and people who get the starter kit they can get this tutorial too um, and this is just um, another little tutorial that you can make with the heartfelt bundle so um, i hope you guys all have a great weekend and um, if you have any questions, comments, just put them down below. Don't forget um, the project sheet um, is going to be mailed out on Saturday, um, as well as the project sheet that I did um, yesterday, the project with the M&Ms, that will also have a project sheet. So both of those will go out in the mail on Saturday. All right. Um, um, and Joe asked a question, can I join again? Um, she had, um, Joe was um, on my team at one point. And yes, you absolutely can join Stampin' Up! again. You can join through me. I hope you join through me. Um, and yes, absolutely, you can join again. Um, just go through the, the same process of getting the starter kit and absolutely. Um, uh, Cindy said she re rejoined yesterday um, and it's, um, getting the starter kit is is an awesome deal anytime so but it's an even better deal always during celebration so yes um go ahead and 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 join again stampin up um welcomes you back and i will too yay all right i hope you guys have a great weekend i better stop talking now and get back to creating some cute projects all right guys take care bye bye